when we found out uh, we were going to have a baby, uh, it was a pretty uh, intense moment. <laughs> I remember that uh, we were actually, I found out um, uh, on my way to the bathroom, there was a, uh, there was a picture of a baby and there was a, a pregnancy test there and uh, uh, that was her way of letting me know uh, that uh, our family was just beginning. And, uh, we're pretty excited. We're pretty scared. Um, it was it was really intense at the moment, um, but I think when we were finally able to process it, we were excited um, that things were actually falling into place for us. Um, we had just got married. We had just got our new apartment. Um, we had just got our first car, um, and now we we're gonna have a baby. Uh, we were gonna become a family. I was really angry and I couldn't figure out why. Um, I felt like my life was changing and I had no control over it. Um, but when I did tell him with the little picture and my pregnancy test, um, his excitement rubbed off on me. Um, and I was able to you know, be prayed and to begin to know that God was going to see us through this. And I became excited. It was a new journey and a challenge. And I'm a family. It was shortly, actually the next day after my birthday, where um, we were scheduled to go to the sonogram. We were recommended to a high-risk uh, doctor uh, because they uh, began to see some things that were going on uh, during the sonogram and they wanted to get some clarity on what they were seeing. Um, and it was in that moment uh, where uh, we were notified that there were going to be uh, some complications and there were some things that they were seeing that was already going on with the baby. Uh, so. When the doctor um, told us she saw some liquid in the brain and suggested that we go see a high-risk doctor, um, it became almost like a dream. Like I couldn't believe what was happening. Um, and I kept thinking to myself, is my baby really sick? Is this just a lie? Is this a test, God? Am I gonna pass with an A, with a B? Um, but I remember um, it hit me when we got home and um, John began to cry. Um, I started shaking and I was super scared, afraid of what was to come. I mean, how do you imagine your baby coming out sick? every other baby I've ever seen was quote unquote normal. Um, it was just a very scary experience. So shortly uh, after that, uh, you know, they were doing the sonogram and we uh, went into the office to talk with the doctor and uh, she began to tell us um, some of the things she was, she was seeing. Uh, she mentioned she was seeing that there was some fluid in the brain um, that, uh, you know, that was a, a large amount that what should have normally been there. Um, and uh, she started to show uh, show us how um, long the baby should have been and, you know, her limbs. And I mean, there was just a series of things that she said uh, were going on. Um, and at that point, uh, she led herself to uh, pretty much telling us that, uh, you know, I mean, there was, there was pretty much an option for us at that moment. Um, you know, and, and you know, based on what she saw uh, at that point, uh, most couples, uh, most people decide to terminate their pregnancy um, and just start all over again um, in hopes for what, uh, again, was considered a normal baby. Uh, and uh, doctors explained to us that, you know, uh, the best case scenario for our child was going to be that, uh, you know, I mean, that she was born, uh, but that she will not have. Um, any functions uh, that normal babies have. Uh, they said she wasn't going to suck and swallow. Um, they said she was not going to be able to recognize um, her parents. You know, she wasn't going to see. Uh, they said that uh, she wouldn't have, you know, any type of motor skills to, you know, look around and notice what she hears and what she sees. You know, she wouldn't look back and forth. Uh, and that was sort of the best case scenario. But what they did say was that there was a very, very high chance um, and they were almost close to certain that uh, they felt that she wasn't even going to make it uh, out of Daniela's womb uh, at the moment.
uh, Daniela gave birth, um, that she was pretty much going to be born dead, um, that she wasn't going to make it, and she wouldn't be compatible with life, as what they would call it. Um, and uh, that was, uh, and that was a big moment uh, for us when we finally realized that um, this was more real uh, than before. I remember when um, the doctor gave us the option of terminating the pregnancy, as they call it, um, basically aborting the baby. I couldn't, I felt a struggle within me and I couldn't figure out what it was. I wanted the baby, my baby to be normal, I didn't want you know, my baby to be more sick and to have so many complications and I thought maybe this would be the best option. Um, and I remember they have you sign a whole form stating that you're not going to go through with determination. Um, and it took me literally like five seconds. I was stuck there and John looked at me and he said, we're going to believe in God. And no matter what happens, it's God's will. And at that moment, I knew, you know what? It doesn't matter what happens, my baby's sick or not, I'm not going to terminate. I'm going to trust in God and I'm going to sign this paper. And I remember when she was born, um, honestly, I didn't think about anything that the doctor said and it didn't bring any abnormality. I was just happy that she was here. Um, through it all, I knew that God was going to have his way. And um, I knew that I loved her. It was an instant love that God put inside of us that I didn't know I had. It was scary, but it was a new journey, and I was ready for it. And uh, when I look back now, I, I I know that in that moment when everything was happening and everything was taking place, um, I felt a peace, um, a peace to, uh, to know that God was with the doctors and with her at that moment, um, and that whatever was going to happen was going to happen. Um, the Lord was going to take care of it, and. Um, Doctors eventually felt that they didn't have what they needed at that moment to take care of her. And they wrapped her up, they showed us her for just a split second, um, and then they transferred her straight to the NICU uh, where they began to work with her. And when she left, we didn't know whether she was dead or alive or what was happening at that moment. So I remember when they told us um, our baby was staying in the NICU and they didn't even how the time it was to when she was come, coming home. Um, because with her hydrocephalus, the liquid in the brain, her not breathing, not being able to eat. Um, they told us she might have to go through several procedures. We wanted to go through with them. And so um, even her first week being born, we had to make a decision. She had a mild rotation in her intestines they were in the opposite side and they had to go in um, remove her appendix make sure her intestines were in the right side um, and place a tube inside her stomach so she can eat through that um, it was scary it was really scary um, to be honest no words or anyone's sympathy nothing that anyone said were able to help us and give me peace as a mom, knowing that every time I left, my daughter was still there. Layla Hope was a fighter. Through it all, she went through four surgeries, four hard procedures. Um, I've only had one, and she endured it all. She was strong. Um, she was able to see us. She heard us. He would sing to her, she would stay calm. Um, when we would walk in, she would start looking for us. Um, she knew us. She, I believe she loved us. I don't know. Um, she was beautiful. She brought joy. That's, I just remember just going to her and everything just seemed perfect. She pretty much exceeded everything right. um, that the doctor said she, she alive? wouldn't do. Um, she sucked on a bobo, you know, when, <laughs> on a pacifier. When, when you put that pacifier in her mouth, be prepared to stand there for a very long time because mm -hmm. she wasn't going to let go. Um, she brought joy uh, to our family. 
she brought a, a new hope and a new uh, a new faith um, in God to our family. Um, she drew us closer uh, to our families, to our friends. Um, she drew us closer to God uh, because I think during that time, um, she, you know, we believe that we've never prayed as much as we prayed. Um, we never had done, you know, uh, that as much as we did until she came into our lives. Um, and every single day uh, was an opportunity to draw closer to God um, and to draw closer to her. It was a Saturday, July uh, 26, and um, it's 4 a.m. in the morning. We had gotten a phone call. Um, and I knew when I heard the phone ringing, um, I didn't really have to look at the caller ID to know that it was the NICU giving us a call. Um, and when I picked up the phone, uh, I could already sense the tone of the, the doctor's voice and telling us that Layla was not having a very good night. Um, she had not been doing good a few days before that. Um, but they pretty much had said that she was, uh, she was not doing good. Um, the whole night and they felt that um, they needed us to come in and um, their very words was that we don't think that she's going to last the next 24 hours um, and so we hung up the phone and um, at that moment my Daniela was already up and uh, she began to cry and um, I think right at that moment uh, we kind of knew what we were going to face when we got to the hospital and um, you know she she wasn't breathing very good um, the, the nurses right away said look we think you should hold her and um, you should spend time with her and uh, Daniela held her for a couple of minutes um, it seemed like her and uh, it was just a few minutes and then I, I held her and I was holding her for a couple of minutes and um, I didn't have to look at the monitors to know that uh, she was in her final moments and the doctors came and they said no let me check you know let me check her out and she checked out and there was uh, there was no heartbeat and uh, just like that Layla has slipped uh, right into eternity and uh, I can't explain how I felt I um, I felt like I lost, but at that moment I also felt like I had a peace, um, and a peace that overwhelmed me at the time uh, to understand what just happened and to accept what just happened. Um, you know, you pray so hard and you uh, you never think that something like this is going to happen, even after all the time you spent there. Um, but it did, and. Uh, we knew at that moment that uh, God was just doing the very thing that we had prayed for. Um, and he was healing Layla. He was, uh, he was taking her out of a life of suffering. Um, and he was doing a new thing. And we, we firmly believe that. And um, at that moment, you know, we, uh, we lost her. Um, and we gained something new. And when she went, I... I felt incomplete. I still feel incomplete. Um, but I knew, I knew that this was God's will. I knew that God healed her completely, and that she's dancing and singing and smiling in heaven, and that He took her with Him. And she's complete. Through it all, I knew that God would be glorified. I knew that the strength that we have, that everyone sees even though I don't see it, um, is God. It's, I, I can't do anything without him. I wouldn't be a mom if it weren't for him. I wouldn't be a wife. I wouldn't be who I am if it weren't for God and for his strength. And his words, the word of God, the Bible doesn't come alive until these moments where you realize that the joy of the Lord is truly our strength and that he is our rock and our shield and that we are nothing without him and that we were created by him and for him.
so we've shared our story with you. Um, we've given you just as best of a picture as we could of uh, what our life was like the last two months. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, we've inspired you to uh, put your hope and your faith in the Lord uh, as Daniela and I did throughout these last couple of months. Um, you know, someone once told me that uh, you don't see the stars until it's uh, at, at darkest time at night. And uh, through the dark times and, and through the dark moments um, in our life, we have always been able to see God's fingerprint and we've always been able to see God's light shine um, through us and through our baby and through our family. Um, and when all is said and done, um, as a Christian and as men and women of God, um, the one thing we, we know is that we have an assurance um, that the day will come where we will meet her again um, in full health um, and in full function. Um, and we, we anticipate that day uh, where we will be with our baby yet again. Um, and we anticipate all that God is going to do uh, throughout this time in our life we know that uh there's a purpose for the pain that we are going through now um but we know that god's fingerprint is on our life and uh, we just want to encourage everyone uh to keep hope alive in whatever circumstance of life that you're going through um whatever storm you're going through whatever dark moment in time you are going through continue to keep hope alive hope on hope and, and trust that jesus uh, is is in your midst and he has uh, the best in mind for you uh, even when you can't feel it and so uh, God bless you I've been running through rain that I thought would never end Trying to make it on faith in a struggle against the wind I've seen the dark in the broken places oh, But I know in my soul no matter how bad it gets I'll be alright There's hope in front of me There's a light I still see The storm you finally find Where the hurt and the tears and the pain don't fall behind